Come and greet one another in the name of the Lord. Come bring all you have and be blessed. Come and worship the God of the great and lowly and share your hopes and fears. Come young and old, for God is calling you. How are you, my brother? Oh, blessed. God bless. How God are bless you, brother? You. I'm doing well. Amen. Great. We are now entering into Christmas Eve. Yeah. Very soon. Nice. God bless you. It's Amen. Exciting time of year. Lord Jesus, when the pressures of the season weigh heavy on our hearts, and the joy of the stable is tarnished by the expense and debt, bless us with a glimpse of your love, that our journey to Bethlehem may not be marred by expectations we cannot meet, or disappointments we cannot contain, enriched by your peace and sustained by your promises. May we bring what we can, give what we are, and rejoice in your love for us. Amen. May God bless his way. Amen. I'm going to call my brother uh, Ben to come and do the reading of the word of God that comes from Luke chapter 1, verses 39 to 56. Okay? Over to you, brother Ben. Amen, and God bless. I hope you're all well this week, and uh, it's just really great to be here again and reading the word with you. We have a awesome verse this week and it's about uh, Mary visiting Elizabeth and a, a song that Mary sung. So it's from Luke 1, uh, 39 to 56 as Johnson mentioned. At that time Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea where she entered Zachariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leapt in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favoured that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leapt for joy. Blessed is she who is who has believed that the Lord would fill his promises to her. And Mary said, My son glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour, for he has been merciful. Of the humble state of his servant, from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the mighty one has done great things for me he's in his holy name. Oh, holy is his name, sorry. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in the innermost sorts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful. To Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months and then returned home. And this is the word of the Lord this week. It's sounding like a exciting sermon that Johnson's got for us, so we'll get him back. Johnson. As we light this candle, may its flame be a blessing. as Mary and Elizabeth <clears throat> meet and greet each other. And Mary praise God for the blessing received. May we know God's blessing in our lives and our community as we offer prayers and praises in Jesus' name. This is the fourth Sunday in Advent. God bless you. Thank you so much, uh, Brother Ben, for the reading of the Word of God. Uh, brothers and sisters, I'm going to share with you this morning on the theme, a move of the Spirit equals shower of blessings. A move of the Spirit equals shower of blessings. With this fourth Sunday in Advent, we have arrived at the dawn of another Christmas Eve. 
Yet the words of the angel Gabriel, Elizabeth and Mary continue to steer the hearts of Christian people around the world today as they have countless generations over 2,000 years ago. Though ancient, these words come to us with the newness and they refresh our spirits with the wonder of a God who comes to us with blessings when we hear them. Many of the phrases in these verses of scripture are some of the most beloved gems in all of the Bible. Luke 1 verse 37 says nothing will be impossible with God. Luke 1 verse 38 says let it be with me according to your weight. And Luke 1 verse 42 says blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Luke 1 verse 46 says my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my saviour. And then in the midst of Mary's song, there are these incredible, powerful words of promise and good news to those who are most in need of good news, revolutionary words of genuine, liberty and justice for all. Ye, God, has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich empty. Our scripture reading from the Gospel of Luke today is the heart of the good news and the amazing story of what it is like when the Holy Spirit comes with a blessing. Mary's response to the angel Gabriel's message is a mode of loving obedience to the God who calls to us in the midst of our daily lives. The actions in our text points to one, news that must be shared. Number two, news that must be celebrated. Number three, news that must be lived. So those three things, news that must be shared, news that must be celebrated, and news that must be lived, those are the three things I'm going to talk about this morning. News that must be shared. As soon as the angel Gabriel departed from Mary, Mary departed for the hills to see her cousin Elizabeth. There was news to share. Elizabeth and Mary both had amazing stories to tell each other. And Mary's news was news that was literally earth-shaking. When God gives good news, it is news that must be shared, not to be kept. All of us are gathered here today because someone shared good news with us. Perhaps it was parents. Perhaps it was Christian teachers. Perhaps it was your friends. Maybe... But someone brought God good news to us and our lives richly different because of these people. Wherever you received this good news, it was shared to you. That's why today you are here. As we bask in the spirit of joy that accompanies this wonderful day, it is good to ask ourselves, who do I know that is in need of good news today? Do you have someone in your mind right now? Who do I know? That is in need of good news today. As Mary's heart turned to her cousin Elizabeth when she received the news. So the most natural thing in the world is that our hearts be turned to those who are in need of good news. You, you just feel that I need to turn something, I need to tell someone. You know, it's like gossip. <laughs> you want to tell someone. So the only gossip I would allow you to do is tell the good news. Tell the good news. When you and I receive good news, the very thing we want to do is to share that good news with someone we know and love. When a new child is born to a family, there is choice, announcement, and long-distance phone calls. You are telling everyone around the world. The news of a long sought after job is soon shared with family and friends. And that is what is being said here. It has been over 2,000 years since the greatest news in history came to earth. Amazingly, there has not been greater good news since that time. To this day, the news of God's intervention in the world through a child born in a stable remains the greatest news of all time. It is news that must be shared. Without this news, we won't even celebrate Christmas. It is news that must be celebrated. It's news that must be celebrated. When good news is shared, 
the immediate response is joy and celebration. We always celebrate, celebrate a lot of things. I've seen on social media people celebrating their graduation, their achievements. They now have got degrees, they've got this, anything. Baby, the celebrations, I've seen it on social media. Why? Because it's worth celebration. It's worth the joy to celebrate. So can you recall the moment that first child was born? Remember the time the doctor told you everything was good to be okay? Was going to be okay? How did you feel? So the good news gives birth to great rejoicing and celebration. Even the child in Elizabeth's womb jumps for joy. When Mary came with her, that great news, Elizabeth is filled with the Holy Spirit. And Mary begins the farmers, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. That's why I say a move of the Spirit equals showers of blessings. The joy that sparkles in the story of the relation between Mary and Elizabeth is a joy that comes only to those who are engaged in the life of faith. It is the joy of obedience that leads to celebration. Mary's journey began in earnest when she embraced the promise of God as brought to her by Gabriel. Nothing will be impossible with God. Isn't that a good affirmation? Nothing is impossible with God. Yes, we realize that nothing is impossible with God because God can do anything. Mary's response was the key to joy. Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be according to your word. Humbleness. I am here as a servant of God only to be used as a vessel by you. Let it happen according to your word. A confirmation of faith. I've got this person by Hannah Whitwell Smith. Um, it's classic, the Christian secret of happy life. This is what she wrote. Condense a line that goes to the heart of the issue of joy in the life of faith. She says, Perfect obedience would result in perfect happiness if only we had perfect confidence in the power we are obeying. I like that statement. So the joy of our celebration is rooted in the obedience of Mary and Joseph and then of Jesus, whose heart's desire was to honor God and obediently carry out the work of God given them to do on our behalf. What joy there was in that first proclamation of the good news that took place between Mary and Elizabeth. The Holy Spirit had come with a blessing first to Elizabeth and then to Mary. And the whole world will be blessed by their, these results. Mary breaks into song and behind the words of a young peasant girl from long ago lies the world's greatest announcement of justice and liberty. So news that is celebrated is news that needs to be lived. In the beautiful ways the Christian world has come to know as the magnificent, Latin word for magnify, the humble, assuming young woman from Nazareth praises God for a blessing and utters the most revolutionary words. Through it, the Holy Spirit speaks of how God is divine is to bring down the mighty and lift up the lowly, to feed the hungry poor and turn away the rich. He has performed my deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their innermost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with things, but has sent the rich away. Verse 51 and 53. Can you see those verses? Those verses are very important. Why are they being mentioned? Why? Let me tell you one thing. It is in the history of God. It is in the history of God. It is in the system of God that he always brings down the proud and the might people. He brings them down, those who are proud and the might. One example is Pharaoh in Exodus 15 verse 11. Korah and company in number 16, we know of Haman. He was brought down in Esther chapter 6, verse 6 to 14. We know of King Nebuchadnezzar. 
He was brought down in uh, Daniel 4, verse 24 to 37. We know of Belshazzar. He was brought down in Daniel chapter 5. We know of Amaziah, who was brought down to, in 2 Kings chapter 14, verse 10. We know of Uziah, Uziah who was brought down to in 2 Chronicles chapter 26, verse 16. So you can see that it is in the history of God of just bringing down those who are proud and mighty. And it is again in the history of God that he exalts those who are humble. Humble yourself before the Lord and he will lift you up. Isn't that great news? Just knowing that God can do that. He humbles, he lifted up Joseph. In Genesis 41, verse 1 to 4. He lifted up David, King David, in 1 Samuel chapter 18 and 2 Samuel chapter 7. He lifted up Mordecai in Esther chapter 6, verse 6 to 14. He lifted up Daniel in Daniel 1, verse 18 to 21. He lifted up John in Matthew 3, verse 4. He lifted up Mary. Recently we have read in Luke 1, verse 48. And he lifted up Jesus. In Philippians 2, verse 5 to 11. Can you see? It is in the history of God to lift up those who humble themselves. Let God work in you. As we, as well as news that must be shared and celebrated, this is news that must be lived. When God comes with a blessing, there is a specific promise that wrong will be made right and injustice will give away to justice. The poor and dispossessed will be filled with the powers of those who are filled and will be scattered. As we celebrate this wonderful, joyous day, our hearts are drawn to the day God came with a blessing through a gentle mother and turned a child in a tiny village across the oceans. And in the ways that joy to the world, there is a promise to all who have been left out. Everyone joy to the world. The Lord has come. It is my prayer in this season that our hearts will also be drawn to give something to our Lord. We are in need of our joyful obedience. The good news is new to live as well as to news to celebrate. It may be difficult to do, but we must look around at those who have need of God's good news even on this day. There are so many in our world who are not included in the blessing we enjoy. There are so many in our world who are even excluded. My struggle with Mary's revolutionary ways are that just at the time I find myself most raped in my family and friends and the blessing we enjoy, I hear a call to look at others with the eyes of God. Yes, we are celebrating Christmas with my family, but I am also being called to look outside. Who do not have? Can we help those people? And when I look and see so many long for the time when God exalted the lowly and filled the hungry with good news, I am so glad to hear such a testimony, such a message. I know of one person who was called, many of you know the story of Archbishop Oscar Romero, Romero who became known as Bishop of the Poor because of his commitment to the sovereign peasants. Romero's heart for the poor was a surprise to his superiors. It was an encounter with the applied that awakened his heart and opened his eyes to the people who needed the good news. His commitment cost him his life when an assassin bullet ended his earthly life because he chose to stand with the poor. There are people <coughs> who are against those who stand with the poor. This may all seem like hard news to hear on Christmas Eve. <coughs> Yet it is news that is intimately bound up with good news. The good news of God is news that is joy to the world and all the world. That is the news I'm talking about. So, in conclusion, what a wonderful Christmas gift it would be for Jesus Christ if his people would rise up and join him, exalting the lowly and filling the hungry with good, good, good things. Then we'll discover the perfect obedience that leads to perfect happiness. <coughs> Excuse me. Then men we have left out will come to know the good God who comes with blessing. Then we will join Mary in a song. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices 
in God, my Savior. We want to thank God. I just want to urge you, when the Holy Spirit moves in you, something happens. We receive showers of blessings in our life. It shows that God is working in us. May the good Lord bless you as you hear this message, as you continue to fellowship with one another, and also experience the generosity that God is doing, even using you to help others and think of others. God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Let us pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we come before you. We thank you for the love you have shown to us. We thank you that we are here because of you. Faithful God, forgive us when we break our promises and let you and others and ourselves down. Help us to be realistic in what we commit to, that we do not take on too much or too little, but carry out our promises with joy, integrity, thoroughness to your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, again, I want to urge you now to think of what gift you can give to God. What gift you can give to this newborn baby. It's a thanksgiving gift saying, thank you, Lord, for sending Jesus Christ into this world so that I, who was heading or who was going to be to die as a sinner will be rescued and Christmas is a time of rescue it's a time of saving those who are willingly and those who accept Jesus as their personal savior so I just want to urge you will you be able to today just to set your heart and find out what special gift, what special gift you would give today. It's part of your thanksgiving. It's part of saying thank you, Lord, for what God has done to you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we bring our offering to you. Father, we know that you have done a lot of things in our lives. We realize how for we are without you. We realize that we are nothing without you. Father, we bring our offerings to you. May you bless this offering, Father. May you bless this offering, Father. It's time for Christmas. It's time to enjoy with our families and relatives. But it's also time to say thank you, Lord, for the gift of life. In Jesus' name, Amen. Let us receive a closing prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you. We thank you for the gift of love. We thank you for everything. God, who blessed the earth with life and love, thank you that you greet us in the person of Jesus and pour your blessings on us by the power of your Holy Spirit. Empowered by the same Spirit, send us out to be signs of greeting and blessings to a world so in need of your peace and people in need of your love. Help us serve and bless in your name and in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit continue to abide with us. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all, brothers and sisters, as we are in our fourth Advent week. Amen. <laughs>